Hey everyone, today we're going to do something a little different. We're going to talk about loudspeaker angles and frequency response. We're going to look at some of our loudspeaker coverage angles and the frequency response of a loudspeaker and how it pertains to how we design a room and space out our loudspeakers and what kind of content are we going to be putting through and that's really going to affect how our performance of our sound system goes to make sure we have the right loudspeaker to the right uh, designed to the right integration, to the right spacing, everything working together. So let's first take a look at frequency response of our loudspeaker. Frequency response is going to tell me what frequencies this loudspeaker can reproduce uh, given one watt at one meter. What is this loudspeaker going to reproduce? Uh, so I can see here it's at 100 Hertz if I give it 1 watt 1 meter it will produce about 81 dB SPL 81 dB SPL at 1 watt 1 meter now this is a low frequency so I wouldn't expect it to reproduce a lot of sound uh, what it really what this loudspeaker looks what it likes to reproduce is maybe just under 200 Hertz and I get about 90 5 dB SPL with 1 watt at 1 meter. In the frequency range that I want to test, I want to test, it, say, uh, 1,000 hertz. It's going to look like it gives me around 86 dB. One, if I put 1 watt into it and measure it at 1 meter, it gives me around 86 dB at 1,000 hertz. I could see at 2,000 hertz, it gives me somewhere... 83, 84 dB SPL, but I can kind of see the tendencies of this loudspeaker. What it does if I give it one watt, one meter at different frequencies, and if I look into the range of what I need for its task, say it's speech, so I'm going to look to, oh, maybe 250 from here to, oh, let's go 10K. What does that loudspeaker do? What kind of frequencies does it reproduce? How even of a sound does it uh, reproduce with that one watt, one meter? How even uh, do the frequencies it produces come out that one watt, one meter? So this is really important when I'm trying to get a good coverage of sound, all frequencies to all ears, plus or minus 3 dB. I can see this loudspeaker between uh, 2K here and between 3K there's about 5 dB of difference from here to here. It's about 5 dB SPL. So this might make it difficult if, if this is the meat of the content that I'm trying to reproduce. Um, if I'm trying to reproduce something in the lower frequencies, uh, down here at 200, 250 hertz, uh, it might give me a, a wider range. As I can see, I'm up at like 95 here, and I'm down to like 83, 84. Let me get another color up. I'm up about 95 here, and I'm down to 83, 84. That's a, over a 10 dB difference. So if this is the meat of my content, uh, I might need to uh, do a little bit to color that or uh, maybe look at a different loudspeaker. But that's how we look at frequency responses of loudspeakers. I want to see what the loudspeaker does at one watt, one meter. Oops, excuse me. Let me erase that there. I want to see what the loudspeaker does at one watt, one meter. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Let's erase all this so we can see our frequency response. If I give it one watt and I measure it at one meter, how much sound pressure does it give me and what is my variance? If I'm trying to have an evenness of sound coverage plus or minus uh, plus or minus 3 dB um, something like content in this area and content in this area I might have a pretty big discrepancy so that's how we read a frequency response chart all right now that we have looked at our frequency response of our loudspeaker let's take a look at our coverage angles of the loudspeaker we want to make sure our coverage angles are 
giving us the right coverage area so we could space our loudspeakers properly and we want to make sure that the spacing and the coverage angle is good for specific frequencies. That's going to be dictated by the content that we're trying to reproduce through those loudspeakers and what kind of performance we want out of those loudspeakers. So let's take a look at that loudspeakers coverage angle. Over here we can see I have the loudspeaker type. Let me get my pencil on here. All right, so I have loudspeaker type and the frequency of what the loudspeaker is going to be measured at, this frequency, 2,000 hertz. So if my loudspeaker is here, facing this direction, we see that is zero degrees on axis. So at zero degrees on axis, here's where we're measured at, right there, X marks the spot. Now, I want to see what this frequency does when I get a certain degree off axis. So I go over 30 degrees, and I'm still pretty good within that first increment range. It's 5 or 6 dB. And then I go out to 60 degrees, and as we can see here at 60 degrees, uh, I go down one increment, probably 6 dB, 5 or 6 dB. So that tells me at 2,000 hertz, or 2K, that my angle of throw of this loudspeaker, before it loses 6 dB, is going to be about 120 degrees total. 120 degrees total from there to there. Now, if I look at the same loudspeaker, model number there, just like this one, and at 125 hertz, let me... Uh, Clean this up a little bit so you can see. Okay, at 125 hertz, uh, I am on axis right here, zero degrees. Well, as you can see, I don't lose a lot of um, a lot of off axis. I don't have a lot of off axis uh, loss because it's 125 degrees. Usually, the lower frequencies. Uh, don't lose as much, and that's due to the f to physics. The loudspeaker is a certain size. We know that um, if the wave is one foot, say it's 1,130 hertz wave is about one foot. If the medium of the loudspeaker is larger than a one foot square, then it's going to block that wave. So the higher the frequencies go, the smaller the sound waves get, the more we block it. The lower the frequencies go, the larger the sound waves get, the less that medium blocks out the loudspeaker. So down here at 125 hertz, boom, 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 arrow there, uh, it doesn't block out those frequencies towards the back of the loudspeaker. Now, same loudspeaker. At 16,000 hertz, very small sound waves. Now the speaker is a lot more directional. I see here's my zero degrees on axis right there. Boop, boop, loud speaker facing that way. And I lose one increment, 5 or 6 dB here, at about 30 degrees off axis each way. So now I have 60 degrees of throw for uh, 16K. Um, so that's how I would read this polar plot. Now, what what is the content I'm trying to do? What is What are the things I'm trying to get this loudspeaker to reproduce? That's really going to be the big question. If it's something like speech, well, then this 2,000 hertz, this 2K guy here, is, this 2K frequency is going to be very important. I want to take that 120 degrees into account. And that's how I'm going to plan out uh, my loudspeaker coverage, how far away from the loudspeakers I'm going to place the other loudspeakers, and what kind of fidelity I'm going to have in the room with that placement. Am I going to have plus or minus 3 dB to all ears? Am I going to have plus or minus 6 dB to all ears? Or plus or minus 1 dB to all ears? It just depends on how far away I space the loudspeakers and what kind of angle that they give me. Okay, now that we have looked at our frequency response and some of our coverage angles, we want to make sure we specify the appropriate loudspeaker with the appropriate response and the appropriate coverage for the content that we're trying to reproduce. That's the important thing, is what is the content, what do we want these loudspeakers to sound like, and what kind of performance do we want out of our system. Hope this has been as much fun for you as it has been for me. Now, I've got a horse to ride. Let's go, buddy.